Oh my goodness. We are live, believe it or not. <laughs> I'm walking on air. Yes. Walking. You remember that song? Oh, yeah. <laughs> What is going on? You are watching Tags Live, aka Talk About Gay Sex, the live edition, where we are here every Wednesday night on the Crowdcast platform. This is episode 535. I am your host, Steve V, alongside Stonewall Inn over there, Cody Maurice Dalget. How the hell are you doing, Cody? Hello, darling. I'm feeling very radical today, darling. <laughs> yes, yes. Is your volume up? I just need it up a little bit oh, more. Oh, yes. I can get in a little bit more. Yeah, Is that yeah. better? Get in deeper. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll speak right into the mic, darling. <laughs> it's so funny. We are live in front of a virtual audience. And the last couple of weeks, it's like technical difficulties. And you remember back in Vakaya when we were doing our live broadcast in front of a studio audience, all of the, mm -hmm. of course, everything always happens day of, but you know, I don't feel so bad anymore because I was watching a YouTube video of Madonna. She's now done the European leg of the celebration tour multiple days here in the states i'm gonna see her on march 2nd so she better get her act together but <laughs> she literally what had this moment where she was going in this scene or this moment and she's like doing like this to her sound check person like nope nope get it right there's no <laughs> like there's no and everything is going around her stages are moving they're ch putting stuff on her and she's supposed to be starting this song and you're hearing this chanting going on and she's like Mm -mm. And they're yeah, you're right. And you see I'm not a, starting. <laughs> you see a crew person and frantically trying to change something. I feel so much better knowing that, like, even on a Madonna level, sound and just it just happens. Technical yeah. difficulties happen, y'all. Uh, we are happy to be here on this Wednesday night celebrating episode 535. We have so much to get into on this episode and we thank those that are watching us live you know if you could indulge me at the beginning of the top of this show i would really uh like to dedicate this episode to a friend of mine that i had in san francisco for so many years back in the 90s i'm talking about david plu and david was one of my closest friends in my 20s when i was really exploring san francisco sowing my oats running around as a go-go dancer being a head go-go dancer at club asia and david blue was my right and left hand and for those that knew david and i hope some of you will hear this on the replay You'll always know that David was the quintessential, he was your right-hand man. He always wanted to, he, he loved working in the background. He loved working in production. He could get the job done. He was a numbers man. He was an, a, a, the quintessential assistant manager, if you will on so many levels. And when I was navigating my homoerotic photography scenes back in the day when I was being approached by photographers, David was my manager. He said, do this, don't do that. Show this, don't show that. Do, you know, contact this person. I'll contact this person for you. I've got this person over here. He used to loan me his car uh Ooh, we would drive around san francisco stomping around san francisco uh he was sassy he was funny he was not afraid to say what he thought <laughs> in many ways and he really was very special and he worked a long time for macy's in various capacities and contributed a lot to society and to the fashion world and to his friendships. And I speak from my heart today. It's a terrible loss that I learned yesterday that we lost my friend David on New Year's Day, um, just sadly. And 
you know, we weren't in close contact over the years, but through Facebook, I would always, you know, send a note here and there and that kind of thing. But David was a very special person that to, when you, David was on your side, you got 150% of a person wow. that was on your team. And I kind of feel like now his angel is above me now. And as I ride through my, he loved managing. He, and I feel like he's going to be managing my only fans. And I just had this whole thought of him now in in a more angelic way and i salute you david as being such an integral part of my growing up and you were so important to me on so many levels we had so many laughs we giggled at the expense of so many people and you were unapologetic and may you rest in power david plu uh, i just wanted to dedicate this he was just had a impact on me and and i just wanted to dedicate this show to my friend david plu so fabulous i'm yeah. totally on board with that and i'm so sorry for your loss babe thank you so much yes um okay i like a lot to get into in this show and you know we have a brand new podcast we've been talking about we are on episode 12 it's called of a certain age and this week we have nicholas ferrer on the show talking about stretch wellness and it's really impactful on the power of stretching and the spiritual sides of it wouldn't you say cody oh yeah he, he was talking about aligning chakras and how it can really get you in touch with your being he's just so knowledgeable i am in the process of booking my own session right now because it just is such a kind and warm person, and it really sounds so amazing and, and enlightening, and it's going to help my body, too. My body needs to be stretched out, basically, so I can't wait to do this. It's episode 12 of A Certain Age, Owaka, as we like to say, O-A-C-A, -A, wherever you get your podcast, out today, episode 12 with Nicholas Ferrer. Check it out. And so with that... The Oscar nominations came out, Cody, and so many good nods and snubs. But let's start with the good. <laughs> I didn't think there was that many snubs, to be honest. But for starters, Coleman Domingo, we've been talking about him on this show so much, got Best Actor award for rustin and have you seen it yet cody please tell i me have not i have not i'm oh i'm behind on movies i've been waiting for some other people to watch movies with them i finally am just forgetting all about them and throwing them to the side and watching the movies on my own i watched salt burn last night it okay. was amazing so I have to be knowledgeable and up on the latest stuff for this show. So I'm not waiting for anybody anymore. So get yes. ready. Well, Coleman Domingo not was nominated and it's a huge nod for Coleman as being, what were we saying? He is one of the first. He's the first gay black man to be nominated playing a out gay black man. That's, a, that's an important component to be nominated for playing a gay character and he's the second gay man period to play a gay character to be nominated so yes. that's big 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 things going on here with mr coleman absolutely and i have to shout out to america ferrera who is i just love her and she's yes. nominated for barbie which honestly i really loved barbie I, she delivered in it and if you haven't seen it already her scene alone several scenes but she gives a quintessential scene that is just amazing and i wanted to share when i first met america at the white house back in i think this was 20 oh my gosh it may have been 2012 so wow 11 years ago 12 years ago this picture um so we're standing in line to meet the obamas at the holiday christmas party 
And lo and behold, I was invited by my dear friend, Frank in Los Angeles, who got this amazing invitation. And I was going along for the ride. I had a tough time tying my bow tie because I wanted a, like not a static bow tie. I wanted to actually mm -hmm. tie my bow tie. I bought it yeah. in the Union Square station and it was this whole thing. And we make our way over there and lo and behold, America Ferrara is behind me. She was with a boyfriend at the time and I was like, now she had a new one. She... <laughs> Can I asked her if I could take a picture. And so I said, hi, I mean, it was a long line and she graciously said yes and could not have been nicer. We were both excited to meet the president and Michelle Obama at the time. And it was, uh oh, Steve. Hi, Steve. So yeah, this is really great. I love this picture. I'm so excited that Steve got to meet America Ferrara. Exactly. Fabulous. Hey, yes. baby. Yes, I took my way from the stage, but um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm there now. Yes. Um, so happy for America Ferrara. Who are you excited for for the Oscar nods? I am so excited for Jodie Foster. I think it's so amazing that she she also as an LGBTQ plus person that she's nominated as well. I am I'm kind of disappointed that Greta Gerwig and Margot Robbie didn't get nominated as well because you know uh Ryan Gosling got nominated and everybody was saying, "Oh, Ken got nominated but Barbie didn't get nominated." But I don't want that to detract from the fact that America Ferrera got nominated for Barbie as well, but that's neither here nor there. I think that it's going to be an amazing show. I'm definitely going to be tuning in because I cannot miss this iconic moment of Coleman Domingo winning. I'm already speaking into existence. He's going to win, and I can't wait. And I'm going to be I'm going to watch Rustin this week. I promise. Stamp of approval. Good. Done and done. Have you seen it? Yes, I saw it uh, several weeks ago, and I loved it. Of course, oh. I'm a Coleman Domingo fan, friend, and of course, I saw it right away. And I already knew, I think I told you this before, I was telling somebody that the Eagle here in New York City several years ago wanted to do a docu, did it, showed the documentary of Rustin Bayard. Oh, really? At the Eagle. And I was helping out with filming and, and podcasting at the time. And we met the partner of Bayard Rustin's, who's still alive. I believe he's still alive. He was at the time. And we got to meet him. This is when I learned about Bayard Rustin, his legacy in this documentary at the Eagle. And shout out to the Eagle for really putting him on the map even before the movie got made, even before mm -hmm. Coleman Dimbingo got cast in it. So I was already aware of the legacy of Bayard Rustin and who he really was as a gay man, as the really pivotal person to start the march in general of yeah, on Washington. Was the, and the if brain behind Martin Luther King. Him, yeah. And so I was so happy that I knew that before. Then when I saw Coleman Domingo get in this role, of course, I had to watch it to see him get nominated and is amazing. So Yes. No, I love it. Love it. Love it. And super excited for his nomination. And whether he wins or loses, it's a huge feat in many ways. So absolutely. Love it. I can't wait. Yes. Okay. Well, recently, if you remember last year, we were talking about a poll that we were not that excited about because it was produced by Wallet Hub. And they said the most fun cities in America for they were predicting for 2024 and it was all based on proximity to various things they had their own criteria we were not very happy with it because vegas was <laughs> number one orlando was number two we new york didn't place until the top 10 with places like san francisco new orleans austin chicago honolulu miami coming ahead of us well it's time for comebacks. And in 2024, Time Out has sealed the deal and said, Time Out reveals New York as the best city in the world right now. 
And I couldn't agree with it more, even in the, I'm so freezing right now, but <laughs> it is really my favorite city in the world. And I always wanted to live here, Cody, because I knew it was on the epicenter of everything. Like I had, I just, it's so weird as when I was younger, I'm like, I know I have to be in New York. I just have to, because it's the epicenter of everything. And I said, if not, I want to die. And I was that dramatic about it at the time. <laughs> um, I'm still happy I'm here. Um, but let me read you the other cities that came in other places. Okay. New York, of course, comes in first place because it's global appeal for visitors and it's ranked by its residents across the board from food and drink to nightlife, culture and beauty. And it was also placed city dwellers from around the world who would choose if they would move to any other city. 15% of survey respondents said they would move here. So that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, Coming in at number two was Cape Town in South Africa, Berlin at number three, London at number four, Madrid at number five, Mexico City at number six, Liverpool, the UK at number seven, Tokyo at number eight, Rome at number nine, and Porto, Portugal, which I'm going to be in a little bit later this year. I'm excited to see that. Um, I like this listing of yeah. top 10 how do you feel about it and new york where you live as number one hey uh i really love this list i'm not surprised that new york is number one because we all know forget what wallet hub has to say who has even even heard of wallet hub <laughs> timeout is where it's at and new york is also where it's at it, like you said, it's the epicenter. I have that in my notes too. And I thought I was doing something with that word, but apparently you were thought of it too. <laughs> but yeah, it's the epicenter of, of culture and food. And it's just an experience that you have to experience for once in your life. Uh, you got to come to New York City, baby. It's where it's at. What does surprise me is that Cape Town, and you said Liverpool. I didn't even know that Liverpool was on this list. I must have just glossed over it really quickly. But I think that, that those two really kind of shocked me because I know Cape Town is beautiful. And I know that it is a just a, it's a wonderful place to visit. They have so much culture there. But I never thought of it in the same lane or the same vein as in New York City. But that just is another place that I have to visit, right? It's just another thing for my bucket list. You know, in Cape Town, when I went there, I was fortunate to go. We were going on safari and we were going starting there. And because the incredible jet lag that you have when you fly to South Africa for most parts of the world takes a huge toll. I had a few days there before we were going to make our way over to Johannesburg and then ultimately go on safari. And one of the things that I was fortunate to do after I got rest was to go out and see the town and to see the incredible city by the water, the incredible food, the incredible nightlife. And by nightlife, I also mean the incredible LGBTQ nightlife. And oh, wow. if I could just tell this quick story, we, my friend and I met this person that was really didn't I, identified as they, them, and showed us the nightlife of Cape Town. And it was really, I don't know that we would have had the same experience had we not met this person because it was really amazing and we got to really indulge ourselves in what nightlife could really be and we met so many interesting people and oh my goodness i could see where it would come in at number two i would probably put mexico city a little bit higher up on the list if oh, i were really? berlin for sure is one of my top cities of the planet i just love it um galore uh so yeah i mean I like the list, though. I think it's really good. And I do, too. It's very interesting. It's diverse. Caladad says Paris is not quite on. Where was Paris? Number 11? Number 11, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of interesting that Paris would be number 11, because I've had so much amazing times in Paris, too. I mean, oh, me, too. Mm, it really is a wonderful city. Yeah, I think if I was to probably let me just do it really quickly. If I was to do mine, it would be New York. Number two would be Berlin. 
-hmm. Number three would be Mexico City. Number four would probably be, oh my gosh, after Mexico City, uh, London. Uh, no, no, Paris, London. Okay. Yeah. Kind of in that. Um, and maybe Madrid after that. Madrid sure. is gorgeous. Madrid it's is gorgeous, gorgeous and vibrant and offering food, art, culture, nightlife, you know, all the things you really are looking for when you're thinking city. So, mm. yeah. For me, I would put New York first, of course. And then I would put put London and then Paris then Tokyo and then I've only other uh, the only other place that I would really want to go back to would probably be Athens Greece or yeah probably Athens yeah final answer top five okay I like it let us know what you think too um, what you would put in your top five of the the what is it called the best cities of the world or mm -hmm. yeah exactly let us know right now. We want to hear from you. Okay, well, we have to move on, and we couldn't help but let's stay in international news. And the Pope has recently come out. You know, we were talking about the Pope in last year. Remember, Cody? When oh, I remember. Pope, <laughs> yep, when Pope Francis approved Catholic blessings for same-sex couples, but not for marriage. And we had a whole discussion about that, what that really meant. So essentially it was like two steps forward and maybe a step back. If you were of the Catholicism still, and this meant something for you, it essentially meant that he was approving your same sex couple, but mm -hmm. it did not for marriage. And it said a lot on a larger scale from a macro standpoint, I guess, if you will. Well, now he's kind of coming for sexual pleasure. And he says that, quote, sexual pleasure is a gift from God, but Catholics must avoid pornography. And he said that in a recent remarks at St. Peter's Square on Wednesday, Sexual pleasure was something to be cherished, he said, but it was being undermined by pornography and satisfaction with a relationship can generate forms of addiction. And he said that we must defend love, but he added winning against the battle of lust can be a lifelong undertaking. You know, I'm not mad at exactly what he's saying. He's sparsing words here, parsing words here, if you will, and... He does say for Catholics, Cody, and I know there's mm -hmm. a lot of the LGBTQ community that still feel a part of Catholicism, that this will be a big deal to them. But for a lot of us, I think we still carry that burden of we were a part of the Catholic religion. And so when you were a part of or you were grown up, you were brought up with this, it has remnants in you and it's it, it's stained into your DNA. And mm. we do sort of want his permission. And even though we've worked through a lot of things, we are interested in hearing where he says on what he says on certain things. I mean, I guess it goes far. I, I'll just say the same thing that I said last time. It goes far, but not far enough for me. And this is why I am still a, a reformed Catholic, if you will, because it's, I, I mean, while I, I can respect people that follow Catholicism, it just doesn't speak to me anymore. And I'm going to do what I'm going to do. And especially as somebody with an OnlyFans account now it's like he wouldn't approve of this and it's like okay two steps forward two steps back do i really care i don't know what do you, how do you yeah. weigh in well to me it sounds like the pope is giving his statement of approval his stamp of approval to act masturbation basically but not porn so to me also does this mean that the Pope jacks off and he's just getting his, his way of coming out of the closet as far as jacking off is concerned because he's like, oh, that's okay because I do it. So but I don't watch porn because that's the bad part. Good question. 
I, I just want to know. It's I don't want to have that image in my head, but I do I do want to know the answer to the question though. So I, I agree with you. I think that as a reformed Catholic, it does not go far enough. I think that they need to get their nose out of our business and just focus on the things that that really need to be focused on in the Catholic Church. And it's not whether or not I masturbate or not, because my pleasure is my own business. And let's and, play. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go. Go ahead. Let's play devil's advocate and go with him for a minute and lust. Let's just talk about lust for a second mm -hmm. and pornography. I don't. I think lust can be a beautiful thing at times and appreciated, and it can also go awry at times too. And so, where I think some of his language is parsed out is I think, you know, there's been times before when I didn't know exactly who I was and I was figuring things out where I didn't act on it, but I was very lustful for somebody that wasn't going to be available to me. Mm -hmm. I think you can be lustful for somebody that you are into and they feel the same way and it's beautiful and you shouldn't feel bad for those things. And I also think that it can also go in a different direction too. And you can be obsessed and on porn 24 seven, and that can be very detrimental to you too. And so it's about finding a balance ultimately, which of course the Catholic religion is not talking about, but <laughs> I mean, I find find your balance and go with that and forgive yourself. If you find yourselves out coloring outside of the lines at times, that's okay. But you can always find yourself back to something that you feel is healthy for you. And only you can answer that question. We are not in your mind and we all do it on a daily basis. Oh yeah. I'm, t I totally agree with you. I was going to kind of switch gears. That's why I was like, no, say what you're going to say. Be but you got to the point that I was going to make because porn in moderation is totally fine. I find myself taking breaks from porn all the time because it does lower my sensitivity and my enjoyment of actual one-on-one -on -one sex. And I've noticed that. So I think that as long as you know where your line is, you're just fine. Porn is not bad. I've learned a lot of tricks from porn. So <laughs> I could do a, a triple sow cow in the bedroom now because of watching. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I, it's everything is about moderation, just like you said. So I'm glad. Yeah, we're on the same page. Love it. Um, Bryce has something to say. Will I move on to our next topic? If you want to All read right. that really Bryce quickly. Bryce says, lust is a part of human nature. Too much of anything, of course, is an issue. But come on, the reason so many leave the church is because we are led to believe that we must leave our humanity at the door. My, his Bryce's dad is a pastor, and he says he's still fucked up. <laughs> I don't okay. think he is. I think he's wonderful. All right. Well, we've got to move on to this. I mean, Oklahoma, we feel for you because there's a potential Oklahoma bill that would ban sending things like sexy selfies unless you're married. And it could also outlaw any sort of sexualized image, play, performance, pornographic or not. It's an anti-porn bill in Oklahoma that is so extreme that it could even make sexting outside of a marriage a crime. And it's a wide-reaching bill would make merely viewing obscene materials a felony. It would also restrict unlawful porn distribution and production with enforcement possible through both criminal prosecution and private lawsuits and make it a misdemeanor to pose for, exhibit, or publish unlawful porn. Of course, it would define these terms, including a huge array of sexually charged adult activity, but it's part of a wave of a conservative plan targeting, I don't know, a, a, a very broad definition of porn, if you will, Cody, that is threatening hardcore pornography, but eroticism, and whether or not this particular bill goes anywhere, it represents a resurgent moral panic over porn. And by porn, I also mean things just like having things on your phone, sending pictures to 
like you may have been doing earlier tonight. And I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, who is this You'll brought know my on? business. <laughs> who is this brought on by? It's brought on by Senator Dusty Devers. And I went on to his Twitter account and Dusty Devers is a member of the Senate, conservative. He is a follower of Christ, according to his Twitter account. Husband, father, pastor, abolitionist. And he is a Christ is Lord. Hashtag faith, family, freedom. So you see where this is, but it is a new wave that is threatening potentially. I don't know that this will go into effect, but there are laws across the country that are going into effect that are restricting pornography and thinking that uh, this is the the thing that we need to focus on. I don't know, Cody, right now with so many shootings going on and losses, life loss that I've seen, is this really where we need to be the focus on right now when we're losing lives to guns? And this is low hanging fruit. Is this a thing of right now because we're in a, uh, a, you know, nominating figures, or is this just the new wave that we're going to be seeing more of this? Um, well, before I get to your, your question, I just want to know what this man is, is abolishing. What is he? He's an abolitionist, but what I don't understand. I need to dig a little deeper because I don't Born, I guess. <laughs> is that all he's abolishing? Um, I, you so you do know my business. I know I said you didn't earlier, but you know my business. <laughs> but you know who doesn't need to know my business? The Pope, Oklahoma, and <laughs> David David De Devers. Is that his name? Yes. Devers, which sounds like a porn name. Now that I'm reading it back aloud, <laughs> so <laughs> I don't think he has anything to stand on as far as that's concerned. So, uh, please stay out of my business. If I want to pose for porno pornographic material i am of age i am not you you don't have to do it you don't have to judge me that is not something that is christ-like okay how about that if we're going to go there if we're going to be talking about the pope and now we're going to be talking about this reverend man who is abolishing porn um that is not what jesus christ did that's not the example that he led by and he i think he would be very disappointed in you for judging other people i think that this is low hanging fruit. This is something that is easy for them, the, that party to, I was trying to formulate my words, that party <laughs> to gain followers. It's an easy, easy tactic as a, and a subject for them to actually um, uh, get Just their get their uh get their followers ramped up and right. behind them and 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 voting for who they want to vote for i was trying to search for a big word so whenever i pause i'm searching for a big word um but i think to i know right they <laughs> but um i think that this is something that we don't need to be focusing on it's not that important i do understand that they want to get younger people from seeing this type of material. And I completely agree with that. I don't think anyone under the age of 18, eh, 16, should be watching porn of any type because it's not, their, their minds aren't in that lane just yet. But I do think that once you hit 18, you, it should be your decision at the end of the day. I agree 100%. Well spoken. Um... David says, watching us live, how do you get on Cody's porn distribution list? <laughs> uh, uh, just DM me and I'll send okay. you I'll send you whatever you want. Caladad says, these so-called Christians really hate freedom. Yep, 100% agree. Uh, Bryce says, what? One eight no, no, no. Don't read. That's just, that's just an inside joke that we got uh, going on. They, you read Doug's and then... Yes, boom. Doug says, someone might want to check the senator's browser history. That He's sure that it would be very interesting. And that is a fantastic point because the thing that they want to get rid of is the thing that they already do. And they just want to be the only ones that are allowed to do that. They just want, they don't even really believe what they're espousing. So I think it's just completely ridiculous. Love it.
Okay. Two more hot topics before we get into giving some advice from Reddit Urs. And I can't wait to get into it. You know, we love Little Nas X and his song. We were talking about it. Jay Christ entered the charts at number 69. And after much hype and clearly an expensive video, like you said, Cody, Little Nas X eagerly awaited comeback single was stalled. The controversial Jay Christ entered the Billboard Hot 100 at number 69. I think he was putting on a really good, brave face. His competition was Ariana Grande's Yes And, which rocketed straight to the number one spot. I really like that song, do you? Oh my God, me too. I was just singing in my head. When you said it, I was like, this is my, that's my jam right there. It's good, it's yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, Little Nas X enjoyed, he's had three top three singles from his Montero album, including two number ones. And he was quoted as saying, we did it, boys. We reached the funny number. Be very proud of yourselves. This is our moment. Apparently talking to his crew, his production team for putting out Jay Christ and the music video, which is really elaborate and amazing. He's coming out with a lot of things in the next couple of days, including an upcoming track with Kesha. And that song, Where Do We Go Now? will debut on Friday. He also has a brand new HBO doc called Little Nas X Long Live Montero, which is debuting this Saturday, January 27th on HBO. But then you can watch it on Max. So I want to watch that as well. It's kind of a behind the scenes uh, type of film, which looks really good. Madonna's in it at one point, which I'm excited to see. Oh, and yeah, she right goes there. to one of his shows and supports him. So I don't know. What do you think of him debuting at 16? I think it's kind of cool. At, oh, yeah. And we don't know what's to come. I mean, the next single could be like amazing. And is what album is he on, by the way? Is this? I think this is his, his third sophomore? album. Or I third? think it's his third album. Okay. Because remember, he had uh, Old Town Road come out. And I think that there was an album alongside all of that, even if it was, Old Town Road wasn't on that album. I could Google it, but give me one second. You know what? He's doing his thing. And do you think that we're really hard on some of these artists? It's like, we're so quick to say Ariana Grande, you know, has, she dropped a single, but I am, neither one of these artists are really on my playlist that much. I'm just going to be really honest. They're, <laughs> they're not. I mean... I respect and like Ariana and I respect and like Little Nas X. They're not artists that, truth be told, I listen to, I have my favorite artists, of course, and we won't go into who those people are now. But for the most part, besides those particular artists, I am listening to BBC Radio One every Friday afternoon. And if I can't listen to it Friday afternoon, I'm listening to the playback because it's a free app and I'm getting the latest dance music and some of the latest artists and I'm getting some really great artists every single week. And it's my thing. I love being on top of what is the latest dance music right now that I need to know about. And it's all over the place. And while I like a lot of my favorite artists, it's like I'm into all these other interesting newer creative types that are making their way um just love them yeah and they need the spins too so it's good that you're supporting brand new artists cough cough uh <laughs> these are like the bbc radio one dance music scene the hottest stuff that's happening right now i'm not interested in like you know America's Got Talent kind of stuff. It's like, well, this is like the BBC Radio 1, the latest dance craze, like, and it's charting. And so these are major DJs around the globe and singers and honey, I'm on it. Okay, so baby. I hear you. You better be on it too. <laughs> I, no, and I really pride myself in being on the latest of what's really coming out of the music scene. Not like these other like one-off stuff it's like eh, no 
Mm-hmm. You've sent me playlists before. I really enjoy that music too. But I also really like pop music and what's coming out and it's what's mainstream kind of sorted too. But and I agree that I think that this wasn't necessarily the biggest hit right now. You never know what singles can do because word of mouth, things of that nature, it could still rise on the charts. I, I'm not that's neither here nor there. I think that what's important is that we allow people to not necessarily do as well as they did before because it's not some a bar that you should be reaching for every it is a bar that you should be reaching for every time. But if you don't reach it, then that's perfectly fine. Move on, gather your forces and do do just as good or better the next time. So I think that he should well, just stated. take this up for what it is. So it's it's totally fine. I think that he's perfectly capable of coming back. Ariana Grande, I don't even know if she's ever been in the top 10 before. I can Thank you. She has, she has had hits before, but I think that they have, I don't know if she's ever been in the top spot before. I could, let me look it up really quick. But All listen, right, what were you gonna say? but just to give him credit, um, I love that he came in at 69 and he played with that oh, yeah. whole uh, dichotomy of coming in at number 69, which is so, super amazing. And this is just the beginning for him. He has so much coming out in the next several months. And I, this is not the last of him. We are hearing so much more from him. So I'm excited. So yes. And she, on the other hand, while I like that song, it's, it's cute for me. It's fun. It's cute. But oh, yeah. It's, and it's nostalgic. It's those words. It's cute. And, you know. <laughs> she, had, to- she had one solo hit. I think it's Positions. But all the other ones were with The weekend, okay. As far as I know. <laughs> okay. Well, we love to give advice on this show. And there's a bunch of ones that we want to try and slam in. Slam. I like that word at the end of this show here and it comes from ask gay man on reddit and they're asking the question are older gays interested in bottoming for young gays interesting conundrum i am a younger top who prefer having sex with older guys because their bodies are much more developed but i'm from what i have seen developed but i'm from what i've seen most older guys want to be the top any tips and somebody quickly replied plenty of tops and bottoms of both young and old age you'll find what you're looking for just call it out on grinder you'll have an avalanche of messages from older bottoms um i'm 50 and a strict bottom and yes i enjoy a younger top however i find most younger tops in my area are not looking for older bottoms so somebody said, I'm 55 and a sub bottom would love to get fucked by a younger guy, but don't have the opportunity. I never message a younger guy first in case they get offended or think I'm a perv. Wow. That's an inter- interesting conundrum, Cody. Isn't it? Yeah. Um, I just want to first foremost say as a former former 100% bottom reformed <laughs> reformed catholic reformed <laughs> now I'm a reformed bottom and I've been inducted into the top kingdom and do you know that the process was what I had to go through to be inducted into being a top Cody I, it was, you, I had to study books and books and and the amount of dick and ass I had well let's just Let's save it for the after show. But the practical <laughs> application test. I hear it's a killer. I was, but I passed. I, I passed. Was, <laughs> I was grandfathered in to being a top, so I, I was happy. I didn't have to take the test, but I've got my I've got my stripes <laughs> since since passing <laughs> for sure. Yeah, I mean, I I, I really feel like get. People hopefully in the new year need to kind of get over labels and age, if you Mm -hmm. will. You know, we talk about our new show of a certain age. And really, I think what we're learning on our newer show is that age is nothing but a number. It's it's nothing but a a mindset. And Mm -hmm. you can actually renew and rejuvenate yourself and your mind at any age and that's how i feel and while i have embraced so much of being a top 
recently. I am also willing to go back to being a bottom at times too. And what I've learned is that I can be versatile too. And that is just solved every problem on the planet. There it is. Too. <laughs> it's a world peace right there being versatile <laughs> my, my dissertation is coming out oh and, she's literary know, i love it yeah, i went to the school of hard knocks and sex and yeah what you question i believe it i believe it you could teach me a couple things i feel like oh, i could teach you more than a couple things <laughs> Not about topic, though. Not about topic. I am the professor on that. Thank you very much. <laughs> I will. I will. I will sit in on your TED talk, <laughs> darling. But... I have a lecture, darling. It's coming out, darling. Um, yeah, I, I would definitely top uh, an uh, an older bottom. It just really it, it just comes down to chemistry at the end of the day. And as long as that chemistry is there, as long as you know, they looking right in them jeans. I'm good to go. I'm I'm all about it. I have no qualms about it. And I think that people should really get over their hangups about age. I've been, I feel like I have had instances where I was, where, was on the apps and people would see how old I am and they would definitely keep it moving because they didn't want to date somebody in my age bracket. But honey, Thing is, I look much better than most of them, so it don't even matter. <laughs> I agree, and we're going to keep it moving because I want to get to this next one. It's slightly related. He writes on gay bros over 30, boyfriend won't let me top or he won't bottom for me. There's a difference. We have been together for five years and we have always been verse. Over the past two years, I became the default bottom. Default. I didn't settle for bottoming. I enjoy it, but I enjoy topping too. And I asked him if I could top, meaning I gave him ample time to know and it wasn't a heat of the moment thing for him to say no. If it's not that topping is that important, but it's, you know, mixing it up. He hasn't given me a reason why. He, he said he isn't in the mood. I have asked twice since then. And can you bottom tonight? I don't want to, he, he keeps saying. So is this a problem in their relationship, Cody, when maybe they're finding that they're not as compatible as they thought they were? Sexuality is something that, especially in a relationship, that you have to discuss it's something that you have to come to a compromise on. And it feels to me like the partner that doesn't want to bottom is not willing to compromise. It sounds like he's not willing to put in effort as far as to making sure that his partner is pleased. And I think that that is definitely an issue. Personally, I feel like if this person had done what he says he does to to, uh, to me, giving me giving me advance warning, giving me giving me time to get my mindset to bottom. I would be totally down to do it. It's something that I could really? see myself. Really? Do you really mean that? One hundred percent. But you had to let me wrap my head around it. That 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 right there is a trick. <laughs> you have to let me prepare mentally in order to take some dick for sure. But uh, if you fill out the paperwork. Uh, get it notarized and and in triplicate, print it out and and then submit your paperwork. In two to six business weeks, you uh, you will get your answer and you'll be able to top me. And that, so that's it. Yeah, I mean, a lot of this is workable, and it's so funny because I recently came across a ex that I was always the, supposed to be the top in that relationship, and that was when I really liked this guy, but. Prior to him, I was always the bottom, but I really liked him. And so I felt like I was, and I'm using air quotes, making myself the top in this relationship, even though I felt like I had no experience in it. I felt like I really liked him. I felt like this is what he wanted, and I really wanted to please him in that way. Mm -hmm. But I had some blockages that... I hadn't worked through yet. Yeah. And a lot of it had to do with earlier experiences and not thinking that I could be this other side. And it didn't work, obviously, because I wasn't there. And 
I've done a lot of work on myself in many ways. We don't have enough time to go into it, but now it's so fun to be versatile and to be able to go in both directions and to, as a daddy at times, be that top person for my partner or be the bottom at times, which I can do really well. It's like, I feel like I've opened Pandora's box of, yeah. of so many, a jewel box. And it's now, if you get with me, you're getting like more of me than ever before. I love that. I think it's beautiful. It's really, you've done the work. And like you said, you were blocked before. And now all of that has blossomed because you have done the work. I feel like this gentleman needs to do the work as far as that's concerned. And if he doesn't feel like he wants to bottom anymore, that's perfectly fine too. Maybe they should work out some other arrangements to where they can both be satisfied, but they definitely need to talk about it at the end of the day. Well spoken, and hey, I love you know, that. I do my thing sometimes. I host the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you do, and you do it really well. So do you, well, darling. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the segments that we have missed for a while is straight up gay porn's thirst trap, and they have done it all year long for the last several years, posting. Porn stars, OnlyFans creators on who took the best shot. Well, they are back now in 2024, and they're asking the question of these 23 gay porn stars, who took the best? Last year's winner, who I'm a big fan of, is Lock Rio. And we put this in the link for you guys. Um, but I will post this on tagspodcast.com, reference episode 535. But because this is an audio podcast and we're revisiting this brilliant segment that we love to end on, our job is to vividly describe who was our winner of the week in a audio podcast. So as if you weren't watching it. And those of you watching online right now are privy to it. I will post it on text podcast, like I said, but our job is to describe why did we pick that one in an audio podcast? Cody, who did you pick? Oh, me first. I love it. <laughs> I'm so happy this is back. This is my favorite segment all the time. I get to look at hot guys. And they really came back with a bang. They okay. are doing this list is so good. Jesus. It was so hard to choose. Um, but, my, but my vote this week, not Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> the Pope. The Pope. <laughs> but my vote this week goes to Gael Kriok. I oh, wanted stop to it. Pick. Was that mine? Is it yours? Oh, I'm glad I went first. <laughs> um, I wanted to pick. Kim yes, Alice. it is. God yeah, damn it. It's mine. Oh, well. Oh, sorry, babe. I'm I love you. Better, I'm going to do a better job describing on why I like it. <laughs> I wanted to pick King Marcellus, but go look at it. His bathroom is disgusting. And I oh, think that the go. towel rack, the towel rack is slanted. And I said, I can't do it. I can't. I can't with this. But Gael. That picture is absolutely breathtaking. He's in an infinity pool. He has the ocean in the background. He's leaning back on the edge of the infinity pool. And he's got this beautiful face. And his dick is just sticking out from right up, uh, right underneath the, the water line. And it was, it's just great. It's a fantastic picture. I want to take eight like it right now. What do you <laughs> what do you who what why do you like Gael? Well, I'm just okay, yes. Um Gael, because I've been in Puerto Vallarta and I've been by, you know, the water and infinity pools. But more importantly, he is serving up the thickest of cocks ever, uncut. It's beautiful. He is giving, serving a look that is like, come on, come sit on this, come suck this. It is, <laughs> his work. nipples look amazing. The hair you know, the hair structure of his body is great. It's it's beautiful. It's just like I would just want to slide in there and like go right up to that cock. And I don't need a cocktail that night, that day. I'm, I'm serving that. And he and gets all the my, cock and tail you need. Yes, that <laughs> is definitely if I had to give like a 
a second one for the bottoms of the world. I do think Sam Ledger is serving it up with his ass also on the ocean, serving up just his ass, opening it up. And he has sandy Mm. feet, which I think is kind of sexy. And he's like, very like, I'm here, I'm ready. Come enter me. It looks like a puckered up ass that's beautiful and ready to go. Um, I would enter it nicely. Also, Dom King is hot. looks like he's in a sauna or a sexy hot shower that I would love. It, the body is on point, rippled, and everything you'd want. The dick is on point, and I just want to slide in there as well. There's a lot of good ones to choose from. Oh, yeah. But- Hazel Hoffman, just absolutely stunning. He's beautiful. And Doug chose him as well. That was my third pick. <laughs> okay. I got a list going, like my favorite, <laughs> my favorite destinations. Bryce also says Johnny Kraken. And Callie Dead says he loves Sam Ledger, just like you. And Bryce also, he, he picked two as well. He likes Flex Appeal. But Gael Kriok is the one that you picked, right? Yes, those are our, that's our first choice. Okay, uh, he is currently, believe it or not, one, two, three. He's number four. Oh, which is good. Who's number one? Hazel Hoffman. Oh, he's beautiful. Yeah, he's beautiful. Yeah. Okay, I like I a lot of too. So yeah, nice. And okay, I'm well, <laughs> in Kelly <laughs> Sam Ledger giving good bottom. Bryce says flex appeal second for me. Giles dick would destroy me, of course. Yep, love. I that. didn't say anything about taking that dick. I just said it's a good picture. <laughs> Thanks for clarification, Cody. That's why I love you. You can love follow you my lovely co- Cody Maurice Doggett. He's a life coach. Follow him at on Instagram at KMD coaching, KMD coaching on Instagram, but follow his personal account at Mr. Maurice, Mr. Maurice. Follow me on the gram. I am underscore Steve V. Uh, Go to my Twitter account at tags podcast, where you can get glimpses of my only fans. And if you decide to go to my only fans, go to onlyfans.com. Sexy Poppy Steve V. Sexy Poppy Steve V. I see a lot of you that have been subscribing and I really appreciate it. Content is coming every week. I'm shooting this Saturday and more to come. So thank you so much. It means the world to me. I'm living my best life right now. And I mean that. And Cody, we want to thank our live virtual audience because you guys give us life here, talking away on the sidelines over here. It's like a great basketball, (laughs) football, soccer game happening in real time. And we thank you so much. Thank you, guys. We love you. Yeah. And in the meantime, continue having hot, hot, gay gay sex. sex. Yes. Lovely. Lovely and amazing.